Remember the days when we went to Kanagawa Prefectural Sadazagawa High School? <laughs> I remember. Super scary movie. Is this a parody of the, the scary movie franchise? <laughs> Can we just take a minute to appreciate the fact that in the movie club they're actually discussing movies? Like for real? I actually get the feeling that the creator of the show is a really big media fan. Like a media nut. Oh no. What is with Japan? This is the second, at least, anime where there's a dispute over a club room. I'm really curious about adolescent life there. Really curious. Lessons we've learned from, from anime. Student club life is everything. A lot of dispute over rooms and members. Everyone in middle school is in a gang, especially girls. People go into alleyways for, for no reason, bump into people, fail to apologize, and die. Sounds like a lot of fun. Oh no! De. Poor movie club. They don't deserve this. I wonder what club is this? It's not the Body Improvement Club. At least not any of the Body Improvement Clubs I know. They wouldn't be acting like this. <laughs> what do we watch these movies for? Haven't we learned we gotta stand up for ourselves? What was the point of all those hero stories? Have you internalized nothing? Oh. Oh, bold move. It's no longer about the DVD though. I feel so bad for these kids. They're just having a good time talking about their passion. Bastards. This isn't the same kid, is it? Is this the kid that is following, uh, I forget his name, Ghetto? Oh no, and his friends fled too! Have you not seen Lord of the Rings? Where is the Sam of this story? Fair weather movie friends. What was it all for? Double hurts. The thing that hurts me the most is the fact that his friends fled like 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 cockroaches. Like cowardly cockroaches. Boy, that crushed DVD really became a symbol of something, huh? It wasn't about that at all. <laughs> it was him making a stand. That was a great scene. It's a real skill and I always love it when people are able to create these kind of vin vignettes within stories that are compelling on their own. You know, that's almost a full story by itself. It had everything in it, except for a satisfying resolution. But I feel like we're gonna get that in the form of some kind of cursed revenge and no tears will be shed. There's something so universally hateable about bullies. I think part of it is because beauty is already so scarce in the world. To come along and destroy something beautiful because of your own spite means that in some way you're, at least in that moment, an incarnate of evil itself. There's a temptation to believe that, you know, every person creates their own morality, but no, I think actually it's something more like anything that leads to unnecessary destruction and carnage. Thinking beyond humanity, creation is, is a part of life, you know, and potential is, for me, almost an, an axiomatic beautiful thing. Destruction is not always terrible if the destruction actually ends up being a force for better or more creation, if that makes sense. Fighting to protect something is not wrong, but for someone to come along and just be filled with hate and just seek to bring everything everything down because you know you hate to see things that are good or you're just miserable about life that's evil just at a gut human level but for me it's more it's evil at almost an objective level and there's something so weak and opportunistic about it because you know typically people like this will only do this when they know they can get away with it and the reason they can get away with it is because of the decency of, of others and the fact that society has structure which is built on a lot of sacrifice and death so that people can live in relative safety and you know have laws and things like that and so people like this you know people who just look to destroy are taking the greatness that has been hard fought and hard won that has been placed on their laps and using it using that very privilege and freedom to undermine it and undo it Episode 10, Idol Transfiguration. This shows some of the weirdest titles. Never know what to make of them. Yeah, it was him. The opposite of affection. Indifference. We're really getting into it now, huh? It's because of Thinker. Huh. That's I have no perspective on that, but that's interesting. Oh. Some foreigner. <laughs> This guy's prime for villain life, man. <laughs> Indeed. Ooh, this is sort of great. This is sort of amazing. Speaking of villain conviction, it's not like the guy's not thinking. Well, I don't think that the word categorizations are the important thing. I will say that it does ring true to me on some level that the opposite of love is not hate, but indifference, because actually I feel like hate and love are connected. They're both about significance. Both hate and love are the same in that they're attention. And for that reason, depending on where the other person is aligned in your interests, they can be flipped really quickly. I'm sure everyone's had an experience where you hated someone at first, but ended up loving them deeply. It's probably because they were someone significant to you, and that means there was value in there somewhere, and if the value can be recognized and that person ceases to be a threat in a key way, it can become something like love or affection. Whereas indifference is 
you're just a non-entity. It's total lack of concern. So I sort of get that. But I mean, the important thing is not that. It's that this kid is developing his philosophy in real time. And he seems to be really curious about his own hatred. Not in a way that's totally giving into it either. He's like really legitimately considering it. But he's sort of in dangerous hands because Ghetto, I think his name is, is an avatar of human misery. <laughs> so like, there's only one way that's going to go. The answer, real, real big. <laughs> they can get real big. That, oh, that, that thing in his hand. I was thinking it was going to be Ant-Man for a second. Junpei is just sort of open-minded. <laughs> I like Junpei. He's, he's a thinker. Every question he answers with some thought and nuance. I like people who answer with, it depends. That's how I know we're going to get along. Ah, interesting. No, but that's not the answer. Kingdom Hearts is light? Oh, Kingdom Hearts is dark. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, this is about to get real complicated. <laughs> Do they have shadows, though? Ah, uh, villain underestimating humanity, check. This is very Full Metal Alchemist vibes. Father. But as we know from anime, humans are greater than the sum of their parts. Yeah, this is just a lot of familiar notes. This part I agree with. It's okay to feel. It's okay to care. Universal regard. And it ends up being something like affection. Look at that. The Life is Meaningless thing I think has been the biggest contentious thing on this channel since the beginning. Uh, like, I've been fighting this fight for years, <laughs> especially with Attack on Titan. And there's truth to it. I think some things I can say are, the world and universe will go on with or without me. What I am in the scope of what is, is infinitesimally small and negligible. But to me, that's kind of the extent of it. And then there's a lot more on top of that that makes it a little bit more complex. One is that almost paradoxically to what I, to what I just said, my existence is fundamental because there never will be a universe in which I didn't live. You know, everything that comes after this is in some, perhaps small way, but I think actually probably bigger than I realized way, forever linked and connected to my existence. If you remove one atom of a thing, is it the same thing? And the answer to me is, for some purposes, yes, but for some purposes, no. I am and forever will be a part of what was and what will be. And then to push back on the idea that it's all random, randomness is really just what we say when we don't understand something. You know, we're here randomly because we don't know why we're, we're here or what's what sequence of events exactly led to our existence. But actually, if we could see, it would not be random. It actually would be pretty clear. You know, there's like a set of universal laws or close to universal laws and just a structure that makes reality possible. That was sort of the algorithm. And then who knows what the beginning of it was, but then whatever was sorted through that algorithm and almost purposely crafted everything that is and was and will be. And by getting as close as I possibly can as a limited human to the truth of what that is and living well in that, I believe I can find meaning. And in fact, I have felt very meaningful at times when I reflect on my life and my existence. So even if that's just a subjective thing in my head and all my claims to objective value and connection to the universe are, are false, at least it's a subjective thing. You know, at least I have it. So it's a little bit too convenient and easy for me to dispense with any meaning whatsoever in life. And in fact, I think the reason why it's so seductive to do that is because I think there is no grasping meaning without also grasping some sort of responsibility and responsibility is difficult and dangerous because it robs you of the ability to make excuses and forces you to confront the pain of your own existence and the pain of truth so that you can be best aligned with what you actually are and what the truth actually is as best as you can understand it. So I see it used more often as, a, as an excuse or a way out of pain, but for me, that's not the optimal route. The answer is not to dispense with all value. It's to like wrestle with it and find it. And maybe that actually at its fundamental level is the struggle to be a hero. You know, it's about resisting the temptation and giving into things that are destructive and joining into creation, you know, adding to the structure of, let's say, someone's society or, or family or whatever it is, whatever the case may be in stories, so that the next rung is more solid and can better create or can better do what it's been doing, which is form life and form increased complexity and structure, etc. It's it's really complicated. It's a lot. But even if I'm wrong about 90% of what I'm saying, at least I believe this is way too simple, even though it's widely held, not as the media, but in life. You know, that's why it keeps coming up. <laughs> Uh, what, what is the point of school when you're contemplating the meaning of existence? She's still spinning! She's been spinning for like eight episodes. Look at this closet badass over here. Is this legal? <laughs> you can just carry around curses and unleash them on civilians. 
イタドリ君が救助。事件当日の聴取をします。But if he can fight it, so, 呪術で妖刀を殺った場合。即時拘束します。Oh, yeah, we're straight in. This kid's not all the way gone yet. There's a chance for him. 二級術史上のポテンシャルがヨシの順平にあった場合。Then we kill him? 一度引いて。Oh. 急ならギリなんとかなると思うけどな。Was me when I was a teacher. You would think they would go one up, you know, like <laughs> make sure that they can get out safely. Kind of towing the line there, living life dangerously. Go, Joe, son. 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 I don't, I don't think he knows. Does he know how strong this person is? <laughs> Indeed. Well, speaking of power exposition or power scaling, this is going to be very revealing. Interesting parallel being drawn in terms of Gojo. Gojo. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But I do get the sense he's playing around, the villain. The lines. It's like the demon slayer string. So you just ski? So you to a tiny makas in a true show to kill. He would not like the earlier discussion that took place. He's not one for semantics. I tell you, you must see. I like people who answer with it depends. Yeah, something's definitely growing, and the heroes, the protagonists, are sort of catching up. This is not the kind of question for this man. Look at my tiny human. Idol transfiguration. There it is. Still don't know what it means though. He's got a whole, yeah, he's got a whole <laughs> collection. Tiny people. Time to go home. <laughs> Clocking out. I see. I have a feeling this is going to be glorious. This kid is doing his thing, walking around thinking deeply. Fuck school. <laughs> what is wrong with this dude? This is how you break the news? I mean, except for that time they fled like cockroaches. You got, you got a lot of this in me. It's a lot to take in. And universal regard and affection. What is this problem? <laughs> well, I don't think we'll need to. But to say, we, yeah, we didn't need this plan. He's about to reveal himself. We could be friends. We could be friends. Please leave. <laughs> Thinking on his feet and improvising. True protagonist. But why though? <laughs> why did he need the... Okay. I guess he needed him to leave. So the closet badass can come and interview him. Oh wow, I just did a huge circle. Oh, yeah, super athlete. We got those powers. I don't know exactly what to make of this situation, but it's interesting that it seems like he's not all the way gone yet. This could be a key encounter. Maybe it'll be a battle for this boy's soul. It's always sunny style. Here we go. I guess he can change the structure of this this soul pretty quick. Is he shooting human bodies at him? He is. I'm having a great time, I was about to say. <laughs> I'm having so much fun, I'm having so much fun, Demon Slayer style. He's self-honest. Always evaluating. Oh, no, no, no. Speaking of Full Metal Alchemist. Well, that makes it real convenient then. Ah, but does he have a heart beneath this, beneath this logical exterior? He does. He's not all T, he's F2. Nobody sort of is though. Oh, he wipes away the tear. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Sorry, we're clocking out at six. Like we said. Oh no. Oh, that's some damage has just been 
Done. Look at his feet. He's Mr. Tomlinson all of a sudden. Now your own soul, and then you can transform yourself. That didn't take. That's good news. I was sure there was some damage done. Even acknowledging his his skills are not a great match, he's still fighting. I guess running is difficult. His feet are kind of bugging me. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Thank you. It's almost six o'clock. Oh, Overtime actually has a like a a different meaning. <laughs> it's got a power equivalent. He wasn't just talking about going home. The opening and ending work together so well. While the opening is so bleak and kind of defeatist, the ending is so upbeat and about not giving up and doing your own thing, <laughs> being cool and also shopping. Juju Sampo. There we go. At least we got Pan in here somewhere in this episode. Fits perfectly. Wearing her clothing? Why all of a sudden? Why do they raid her closet? Apparently this is all canon, so... <laughs> yes. Oh, whoops. That makes it okay then. <laughs> everyone's in on this. Yuji working hard, out on a mission, risking his life. What is everyone else doing? Dress up. It's not like there are curses roaming the world, wreaking havoc on humanity or anything. I guess this is just how they relight their feelings living in Tokyo prison. This show gets more intriguing as I watch. I feel like this episode was really special in regard to the, the conversations that they're having between Ghetto and the kid whose name I still haven't learned. There's something really interesting about the kid, not because of his beliefs and his experience, although that's compelling in itself, but he doesn't seem resolute in anything specific yet, other than the fact that he's experienced a lot of pain and is working really hard to kind of come to grips with that and his role in the world as a result of it. But from there, there's a lot of ways it can go, which makes it kind of thrilling that he had that conversation and then immediately after met Yuji because this is going to be a very key introduction it seems. In fact, there might be something in there that's going to be a parallel for Yuji because Yuji's been brought into the Jujutsu Kaisen world as as a sort of outsider, as a young kid who's in high school, learning the ropes through Gojo. This kid is being brought into sort of the, the enemy world, the opposite world, and that was sort of confirmed, I think, or validated to some degree by he who hates overtime because he directly compared the two. He compared Gojo and Ghetto. They both seem to be at the height of power in their respective areas and have a confidence that, that brims from that. So there's a lot of really great things being set up, clearly. This show gets more exciting with every, with every passing episode. <laughs>